Hello everyone. Today I'm painting, I was playing last night and I painted these little cherry blossoms. Uh, I wanted to practice with some background so I thought, you know, I'll share that with you today because I posted it somewhere on Instagram or somewhere and everybody was asking me about it. So it's a really wet on wet technique which I love to play with. Um, and I'm using my Strathmore journal because I just happened to be painting in this one. What I'm looking for, okay, is, um, okay, so I've got my eight Velvet Touch Princeton. I've also got my six. These just kind of seem to be companions for me these days. Uh, let me get one second. I'm going to get my paints the paints I want to use. Okay, I'm going to use my My Lang um, palette. Let me grab it. Okay, I have to tell you, yesterday I was painting out, and boy, I really messed up my palette, you guys. I almost feel like I want to glue these down because this is the second time this happened. Kind of crazy. And I was banging my purse around, so, you know, I should have known. But all my little things got all crazy in here. I'm just pushing them back in, which I'm kind of surprised they they did that because they seem to fit in tight. So let me just give these a little squirt. I'm going to be using my Rose Red um, color here. So let's see, where should I put this. Oh, I wanted to share this other cool thing I've been using for a while now. It's, I hate um, going through paper towels and wasting all that paper. So I found these, obviously I'm not affiliated, you guys. I just think these are kind of cool. They're um, washable paper towels. <laughs> Isn't that funny? From Amazon. So I've been using these and I really like them in my kitchen and everywhere. Anytime I would use a um, regular napkin or something. I use those. Anyway, I digress. All right, I've got my my Langs, um, which are, as you know, my favorite for sharing with students. I've got my wash and rinse water. So one clean water, one um, dirty water. Um, I use the My Langs ceramic uh, two well palette. And... Let me grab another one of those. I just splattered some water on here. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to use some water, some clear water, and I'm just going to kind of paint this shape here. Let's see. So you may not be able to see this. You could even go in with just a really, really light wash. for my first petal here and then wet my brush a little bit more like that then maybe one petal coming out here I love these cherry blossom my girlfriend lives up in Seattle and they are going crazy right now at the university Okay, and then I'm just so, so lightly, I mean hardly anything on the tip of my brush, and I just tap in here and there and kind of let it spread and do its own thing. Now, if I wanted to pick up some of that, I could just with a barely damp brush. I love this look of the wet and wet. I think it's so pretty. And really, anytime I can use wet on wet and kind of let the watercolors do their thing, I'm totally down for that because I just think watercolors is so magical. So I go back and forth. I've got my palette here. I have a couple palettes here actually, but I happen to have that pink on here. Of 
course, because it's my favorite color. I've also got my little watercolors and wildflowers there. But what I do, which is why I like always having a paper towel or, or something in my hand, is I'm constantly picking up paint and tapping off. So I want to get a little darker in the middle and kind of let that spread out. And going in and just doing a little bit of outlining, but picking up a tiny bit on my tip. And going in, and there we go. And then I'll just rinse my brush, tap it off. Because I really want this to be washy, like that. And then maybe the tiniest bit, just the tip of my brush, I'm going in. just really gingerly and subtly adding all this color in and leaving it so it kind of spreads and does its own thing. My Really my favorite way to paint. This would be wet and wet. Wet paint into wet paint. And wetting that a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and go on to maybe another flower here. And I will, let's see, let's start. Want a little bit more water. It's almost like a clear water, tapping that off. And let's go into here. And I'm intentionally, so see that's even a little bit more color than I really like and I'm budding up next to this other one here. And then coming out. <laughs> my dogs outside my studio window are howling. I don't know if you can hear that. So funny. I always think, oh my gosh, do you guys just hear all these little sounds? I don't know how to get rid of those. One of these days I'll learn to edit, guys. I'm having too much fun just sharing things with you and creating those little kits. So in here, I, I want to go back in and just add a tiny bit more of the color in the middle because this all got a little bit jumbled up. So I just washed my brush and I'm gonna lift a little bit. Now this paper I'm painting on too is totally different than where I painted on last night, which is the, um, let's see, what is this? Oh yeah, I love these little pads. They're perfect to travel with. Look how tiny they are. They're five by seven, I love them. Um, I was painting at the spa the other day and this was so great to paint with. So this paper is just a little bit different. It is a Strathmore paper, but it, it handles a, a bit different. So I've got water on my brush again, and I'm gonna go here, too much water, and just start creating that next little petal. There we go. Wash, rinse my brush. Maybe tap in right to the center again so we get that center of the cherry blossom. Now, what will really make a difference is when I go in and add the brown because that's so um, iconic to me, cherry blossom. And then I want to do one more up here. So I'm going to make this one a little bit on its side. <clears throat> so point, press, and point. Point, press, and point. So you're kind of seeing the side petal there. 
And then we'll have our petals come out from the back like that. And now I just go in and just touch in here and there to get some color. I do a lot of this lifting, dabbing on my paper towel. I actually never noticed how much of that I do until I started doing these tutorials. I was like, oh, that's kind of like a habit or something. And then maybe one out here, something like that. There we go. Yeah, this definitely handles differently than on that 100% cotton paper, which is okay. It's just, I noticed this kind of doesn't react the same as last night when I was painting this, but that's okay. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create this brown stem that's coming up through it. Always one of my favorite parts. There we go. I think it's so beautiful with the pink. There we go. And then I'm just gonna use my brush because I just, I never like hard lines, just kind of my thing. I'm always softening everything so it's washy. I just think it's so much prettier. And then I'm gonna add in maybe some little touches of green here and there. And a couple little brand, little blossoms coming out like that. But really trying to keep this washy because I think it's so pretty. That's just the style. It's interesting. I see client, my students in my classes and everybody, you know, has their different thing their styles, some people really paint in an acrylic style. I can always tell when people are coming from playing with acrylics because they use the um, medium really heavy and very opaque because that looks a lot more like acrylic and it's what they're used to. It's just adding in that little stem Maybe a little bit more water. And I need to tap that off. And coming out there. There we go. And then I'm gonna go in here, which is tiny, holding my brush upright and just barely using the tip. And create, let's get it a little darker brown there. Tap off like that and just create some of these little things in there because to me that's what I recognize when I see cherry blossoms is that little tiny element in there. Don't know if I want to do this yet. Yeah, it might be dry. Let's try it out here. Even if it bleeds a little bit, I'm okay with that. Yeah, so right away from me, that says, bam, that is a cherry blossom. And just because of those little things. And I do like that it's so washy here. And then let's just maybe create some little... Just little buds here and there. We could even maybe do another branch coming out this way. Pick up a little bit more of that paint, that darker brown. I've got some here, just the tiniest bit. And bring this up here and maybe out. I think that looks so pretty. So you've kind of got things going this way again. It's almost like in a triangle, isn't it? And then you've got that going out there. So it's very interesting as far as 
composition for me. There we go. Using a little bit darker value for touching into those. And I rather like that. Now, how I did the background was if you saw my background tutorial, I just went in between. And for that, I might use my thinner brush so I can get in between everything. Now, I can't do it on this one right now because um, I have uh, some wet areas here. And I feel like I want to go in to wet that a bit. So interesting to me how different this paper is reacting to compared to last night when I used this Meaden 100% total difference. And I was expecting it to act the same. So I'm somewhat adjusting here. And there, this is where I am tapping in and then tapping on my onto my little paper towel. Now I'm going to wet that, clean my brush, and just encourage that to spread a tiny bit. I think that's what this paper is doing in the Strathmore Journal, is it just doesn't quite spread as well. Of course, 100% cotton is awesome. Oh, I need to go in first with a wet brush. There we go. And I'll just tap in here. felt like I wanted to darken that up a bit. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like that. Darken up some of the edges just for some more interest. I'm using a damp brush. And there we go. I kind of I kind of like that. Yeah, gives me a little bit more of that washy view. I think I'll go in here and just, I'm gonna get that spread of the pink in the center. Let's see, pick up some more of my pink. There we go. Now I don't wanna go in with too much water here, otherwise I'll really lose control. So tapping off my brush on the side and yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. There we go. We could even do that one. Let me just wet the inside a tiny bit. Oops. Not too much. And I go beyond where I want the paint to spread because that way it kind of ends. So that really created this like pulling your eye in there, right? So there you go. Um, let's see if I can do a little bit of the background where I probably shouldn't because this is still wet, um, but I really wanted to show you that background. And then, you know, the other thing I'm noticing I didn't get here because I'm just yapping away is the little circles. And I tend to use a really dark brown for those because that's just what I feel I see. My girlfriend sends me so many pictures of these and they're absolutely stunning. I hope to see these in person one day. I know um, Japan has a whole Sakura festival which I can only imagine must be absolutely breathtaking. All right, so there you guys go. I hope that was kind of fun and um, 
I wish I could show you some of that background, but I'm just afraid to go into this too much that it might just turn into a big old huge mess. Um, let me see if I could maybe shoot it with, it's really cold here too, so. Everything is drying rather slowly. If that helps. Maybe I could do a bit of the background for you. So all I do is I go in and I'm going to wet the background area, but I try to go around the petals if I can, and I'm going to extend that water line farther than I want my paint to go because I want a soft line where my paint will stop. So let me grab some of this brown and just start tapping it in there. Now it also helps to be, gosh, this paper just reacts so differently, um, to be on a, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Hold on, because I have my paints and things leaning on my paper. So I kind of like my paper to be tilted because that helps with the background. So this is very light. Now I can go in and kind of tap in with that darker brown. Now again, this, this paper is completely different. It just doesn't behave for some of these things like that wonderful mead and paper. But there you go. And then you could even put some little bit of pink in there because that might look like there's more of those little flowers around. So I'm gonna go ahead, hopefully this is dry enough, and just add in some more water, but I gotta work fast with this paper. It's drying really quickly. And let's go in, add some of that brown. I'm not going all the way to the edge of my water. And I'm letting this drip down. Another interesting thing here is when I do stuff like this where I wanna have some looseness, I will hold my brush back farther. It just helps me be a little bit looser with my brush strokes. So I just continue going in. Now normally you could paint a little larger area, but not, not with this paper because it dries, dries rather quickly. So I would just do this all the way around my painting and just keep going. And then adding in just barely touches of pink just to look like some in the background. Might even add in a little bit darker, let it run down. If you like the drips, you could kind of do some of those drips in there but I really honestly don't have a lot of time to work with the paint in the water like I might normally. But I, I like that look. So there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and just play with the rest of this and keep adding in more background, just tiny swatches at a time. I am trying to go around the pink. Don't really want that brown completely mixing with my pink. Maybe in here. Oh, I had some brown on my brush. There we go. Yeah, I really like this background effect. It's 
very subtle and especially when you're painting something kind of more subtle like this I think adding in this darker background is really pretty it's that contrasting element in a composition so there you go I'm gonna stop right there and I hope you guys will give these a try and there you go. All right. Happy painting, friends.